The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. As of January 1st, 1950, over four and a quarter million men and women were members of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Of this membership, a very high proportion consisted of people who had seen the wisdom of an equitable independent 60s plan. Independent 60s? What do you mean? Financial independence after your 60th birthday. Freedom from money worries, freedom from job worries. That's what you look forward to with this Equitable Society plan. Interested? Then you'll want to listen carefully in about 14 minutes when I give full details on the Independent 60s plan offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, The Handsome Heel. The members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation realize that in the war against crime, victory will be won by those who are best equipped. With the fingerprint arrest records of more than 8 million people on file today in Washington, it is obvious that law enforcement officers will never outnumber the criminal population. Therefore, superior knowledge must be brought to bear, must be made a factor in the battle. For that reason, your FBI annually undertakes a nationwide survey of the field of crime so that it may better understand the mental and physical activities of the criminal. That survey, covering the last 12 months, has just been completed. Perhaps a few of the facts revealed by the study would interest you. For example, more than 4,500 thefts of one kind or another were committed every day throughout the past year. During the same 52 weeks of peacetime, almost 300 persons were feloniously killed or assaulted every day in various parts of the nation. The total value of property stolen amounted to more than $108 million. The survey is crammed with many other facts, each an indication of how active America's criminals have been. Not even the most optimistic can find reason for cheer on any page. But perhaps the most discouraging item is the one which states that despite every effort, the number of crimes in the United States, as compared with the total for the previous year, was up almost 5%. Tonight's file opens at a sports arena located in a large western city. A roller skating marathon is in progress, a test of endurance in which teams composed of a man and girl skate endlessly around a wooden track. One team, made up of a good-looking young man and a faded blonde, seem even more weary than the others. Frankie, I'm pushed. But don't quit yet. Listen to them. They spend a buck and they want blood. Oh, look at how stanky! Ah, shut up! Honey, don't knock stuff like that. Nah, she can swing at you all night. But, girl, that's what those talent scouts are always looking for. Guys that make things fall over. Talent scouts here? Sure, they go every place. Even through a broken down Mr. Martin Table in box 160. Five offers $10 for the winner of the next sprint. Oh, no. Take your warm-up now. Who needs warm-up? In two minutes, by the big clock in the end of the year, we'll bunch up and get a start. Let's quit, Frankie. No, not yet. But we got no chance. Just keep going another ten minutes till midnight. Why? For the prize money. Huh? In ten minutes, they take the money into the office to count. So? When they do, I'm going in and steal the whole thing. The following day at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is at his desk when Police Detective Ralph Harper approaches. Morning, Jim. 
Oh, good morning, Ralph. Hey, congratulations on the new assignment. Thank you. Say the word if you need any help. Well, uh, that's why I'm here. Oh? I got a set of prints. For us to check? Mm-hmm. We got no local record on them. Well, maybe Washington has. Where are they from? The gun used to stick up the office at the arena last night. I thought the arena was closed. It was. Some fly-by-night promoters rented it and put in a skate-a-thon. Put in a what? <laughs> they call it a skate-a-thon. It's a skating marathon. Oh. What was the M.O. in the stick-up? A yeah, man using a handkerchief mask went into the office. Apparently, he knew when the receipts were counted. How did you get the bandit's gun? It was found right outside after the robbery. Are you sure it's the same gun? Yeah, it was identified as the spare pistol used by the man who starts the sprints. Mm-hmm. I see. Have you done any interviewing, Ralph? Mm-hmm. Came up with a pair of suspects. Mm-hmm. Who? Two of the contestants, Frank and Pearl Phillips. Phillips, huh? What have you got on them? Now well, they disappeared last night, quit the show just before the stick-up. They didn't even show up for the few dollars they had coming. Ralph, tell me. How do they find people to enter a thing like that? <laughs> Add in the paper. Anybody silly enough to answer was hired. <laughs> well, I'll put a rush request on these prints. Thanks, Jim. Party the minute I get any word. Frankie. What? What's your mother like? Why? I want to know what to expect. Well, don't look for nothing. You won't be disappointed. You think she'll like me? Sure, if you bring her a case of beer. I don't see how you can talk that way about your own mother. You don't know her. Well, then why are we going there? I want to get my scrapbook. Your what? Scrapbook, the thing I keep pictures of myself in. Oh. Baby pictures, huh? No. Oh. Some of when I won a skating contest. Some of me in the Army. Some of when I was Mr. Midland Beach. Mr. Midland Beach? What was that? A handsome contest. And you won it? Sure. Oh, gee, you never told me that. Well, I don't like to appear braggy. Oh. What do you want the pictures for, Frankie? Oh, Pearl, I told you to use when we get to Hollywood. That shows people how I can act. You mean they can tell just from, like, snapshots? Well, sure. That's where they find all their stars. But some of them are actors. Oh, a couple, maybe. But if you got a regular talent, like swimming or skating, then it's quicker for you to get to be a star. Gee. Gee, just think, Frankie. You may be being a star. Sure. If I get to be a big enough one, we wouldn't have to do no more stealing. <laughs> Special Agent Taylor. Ralph Harper. Did you call me? Yeah, Ralph. I got some word from Washington on those prints. No? Who's are they? They belong to that suspect of yours, Frank Phillips. I thought so. I learned that we're looking for him, too, Ralph. Now, how come? He's an army deserter. Well... Hey, did you go back to the arena? Uh, yeah, I interviewed some of the skaters. Got a little background on Phillips. Apparently, he brags quite a lot. He's also movie-struck. No? Yeah. Always talk about talent scouts coming to the arena to see him. Oh, one other thing. A car was missing from the parking lot in back of the arena about the time of the stick-up. Any alarm out on the car? Yeah, and on Phillips, too. Well, Washington's still attacking us his army record, and when it comes in, Ralph, we'll go to work together. Just a minute. Oh, Ma. Oh, you. Yeah. Who's she? My wife. You poor girl. Go ahead, Emperor. You think we should? Sure. Don't let her bother you. No, don't let her bother you. What'd you come here for? I was homesick. Then go down to the jail. Uh, Frankie, I, I I don't think your mother wants us here very much. Eh, of course she does. Sure, sit down. I'll bake you a cake. Yeah, it's one of her specialties, Pearl. Beer cake. How long are you going to stay here? Till tomorrow. That's long enough. Hey, uh, come on, Pearl. I'll show you my old room. No, you won't. Huh? Not your room now. Why not? It's rented. Well, 
What about all my stuff? I doubt it. My, my pictures and my scrapbook. They're in my room. Would you rent the couch, too? No. Well, that's good. You can sleep on it tonight. We'll use your room. <laughs> Doing, Jim? Oh, hi, Ralph. Yeah, I just got the rest of that report on Phillips. May I say it, please? Sure. Here you are. Thank you. He deserted the day after he was drafted, so there's not much of an army wrecking. Uh-huh. Yeah, he comes from Auburn. Yeah. Well, there's not much here to tell us where to locate him now. No, I'm afraid there isn't. Uh, how about that check on hotels and rooming houses? No trace of either Phillips or the girl. You covered transportation terminals, too? Yeah, no luck there either. I've come up with only one thing so far. What's that? Some pictures of Phillips and his wife. Where'd you get them? I went through the newspaper coverage of that skater farm. Oh? You got any extra copies? Yeah, right here. There you go. Thank you. I'll be going up to Auburn, Ralph. Yeah? When? First thing in the morning. I've got to interview a witness in a case that we've got coming up. Well, while you're there, you can check on Phillips, huh? Yeah, I've already wired the Auburn police. When I finish my interview, I'll drop in and see what they've come up with. <laughs> Are you still sleep late? Huh? That's right. Give me some coffee, will you? Yeah, you got a wife. Let her wait on you. She's busy. Sleeping? No, packing. We're getting out of here. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Where are you going this time? To Hollywood. What for? I'm going to be a movie star. <laughs> What's so funny? You couldn't even be an usher. Yeah, well, you just wait and see. I, uh... I suppose you'll send for me when you make it. Ma, don't wait by the mailbox. Frankie! Yeah, what is it, honey? Should I pack you a suit? If you did, what would he wear? I got two suits. Wow, big shot. What do you want me to do, Frankie? I'll come in and show you. Ma, brew up that coffee, will you? Brew up that coffee. (laughs) If you want any coffee, you can make your own. Give me orders, will you? You know what your father always told me, don't you? He knew what a bum you'd be. Yeah. Yeah? Mrs. Phillips? Yes? I want to see you, please. All right, just a minute. Mrs. Phillips? Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, cop. That's right. I'd like to talk to you, please. Go ahead. Can I come in? Yeah, come on. What do you want? I'd like to ask you a few questions about your son. Frankie? Yeah. What about him? I was sent over here to find out where he is. Why? Well, he's wanted as an army deserter and on at least one other charge. Still getting in trouble, huh? Have you heard from him lately? Yeah. Where was he? Well, I don't know if I should tell you or not. You don't have to. But look what you've done. It was a cop. I don't care what he was. You didn't have to spill my beer. We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now a quick interview with an Equitable Society member who's discovered that life can begin at 60. About 25 years ago, Mr. Oscar McClain started an Equitable Independent 60s plan. Last year, on his 65th birthday, he began cashing in on that plan. He quit work to enjoy the three freedoms that go with an Independent 60s plan. First... Freedom from job worries and money worries. Financial independence. (laughs) I'll never have to ask my children for handouts, Mr. Keating. Every month, the postman hands me a letter with a check from the Equitable Society. Second, 
Independent 60s means that you're free to live anywhere you choose. My wife and I, uh, well, we're tired of cold winters. We've, uh, we found a swell little place on the west coast of Florida. Third, freedom to do the things you've always wanted to do. Catching up with all the fishing I missed during the years I was tied down to a job. Mr. McLean, the more I listen to you, the more I wonder why everybody doesn't have an independent 60s plan. Lots of men who can't afford it think they can. <laughs> That's the way I used to be. Who opens your eyes? My equitable society representative? It's a fact. You don't have to earn big money to begin an equitable independent 60s plan. Ask your equitable representative to explain why you probably have a big head start toward independent 60s because of Social Security and life insurance already owned. Often only a small amount of additional insurance is all that's required. A few dollars a week did it for me. Friends, why not profit by Mr. McLean's example? Why not phone your equitable society representative without delay? Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Handsome Heel. In tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, you have a prime example of what a potent factor environment is in the rearing of a child. Not neighborhood. For criminals have come from the mansions of wealth as well as the hovels of poverty. Where the environment struck in this instance was in the home of Frankie Phillips. A home that made him what he is as surely as if he had gone to a school for criminals. Unfortunately, your FBI is only what those initials stand for a Bureau of Investigation. Their job is to look into crimes over which they have jurisdiction after they have been committed, not before. In isolated cases, they have been able to function in the field of crime prevention. But for the most part, they are helpless to do anything but investigate. The real job of crime prevention can be done in only one place, the American home. In the past year, Almost half the people arrested in the country were under the age of 30. That indicates that somewhere along the line, parents have failed to teach that generation the one thing that would have stopped such mass criminal activity. The important bit of knowledge which makes decency follow automatically. A respect for their fellow human beings. The place for young people to learn that is in the home. And the time to teach it is right now. Tonight's file continues at Memorial Hospital. FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor has just entered the room where the police officer is recovering from his attack by Frank Phillips. Hello there. I'm Jim Taylor. Oh, hello, Jim. How do you feel, Jim? Oh, I'm okay. Exactly what happened? Well, when your wire arrived, the chief sent me over to see Phillips' mother. Yeah. I checked around the neighborhood first to find out if anyone had seen him, but they, they hadn't, so I went in and talked to her. Mm, did you get a chance to question her before you were here? No, not not really. Mm. Did you see anything in the place? Yeah, plenty, but too late. Mm? There was a mirror in the room. I, I happened to look at it just as he slugged me. Well, that's pretty conclusive evidence. Yes. It doesn't do you any good, though, Jim. Well, maybe I can get something out of Mrs. Phillips. I'm going over there now and finish that interview. <laughs> I thought we'd never be doing. You mean being in Hollywood? Oh, not only in Hollywood, but right on the corner of Vine Street and Hollywood Boulevard. Look, look, there's the Brown Derby. Yeah. I wonder where Cyrus is. Oh, it's up the block someplace. You know, I just can't help staring at everything and everybody. Have you been noticing the girls, Frankie, the way they're dressed? Never saw such smart-looking flash. Yeah, they ain't bad. Yeah, what about the fellas? They're all so handsome. Look, look at that newsboy there, for instance. He looks just like Gregory Peck. Some Gregory Peck. He does. 
Gee. Gee, Frankie, with, with all these good-looking guys, you, you think it might maybe hurt your chance? Me? Are you kidding? Or oh, I'll stack up against any of them. Besides, I got talent. How many of them can skate? <gasps> Frankie. What's the matter? The skate. What about them? I forgot to pack them. You... Oh, that's great. What are you trying to do, knock out my career? Oh, I'm sorry, Frankie. Well, a lot of good that does. Well, we could call your mother, maybe, huh? Ask her to send him out here. Uh, she wouldn't send us the right time. Well, look, you let me talk to her. Um, I'll say you got a part in the picture, see? See, you're going to be like Sonia Heine, only it's a fella's part, and, and it ain't ice skates, it's roller. Oh, come on, let's go make the call. I'll fix everything. <laughs> Just a minute. Mrs. Phillips? Uh-huh. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Here are my credentials. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you. Come on in. Thank you. Just throw that stuff someplace. Sit down. No, that's all right. I'll stand. I wish I could. My feet are killing me. Mrs. Phillips, where's your son? Go on, I'm glad to say. Do you know where he went? If you help us now, it's possible there'll be no charges made against you for aiding a fugitive. Otherwise, you'll arrest me? Possibly. Now, will you tell me where he went? California. What part of California? Los Angeles, Hollywood. I got a phone call from my daughter-in-law. She wanted me to send them some roller skates. Roller skates? Yeah, they forgot to pack them. Did you say where they were living? No. Well, then where were you supposed to send the skates? General delivery in Los Angeles. Mm. I sent them last night. I see. Thank you, Mrs. Phillips. Oh, much better, thanks. Good, good. Did you get to see Mrs. Phillips? Yeah, she talked. Her son and his wife were in Los Angeles. She sent them a package care of general delivery there. Well, that should make them easy to pick up. Well, I called our L.A. office. They said they'd put a surveillance on it this morning. What was the old lady doing when you got there? (laughs) Having some beer for breakfast. (laughs) I think she uses it for all three meals. We picked her up one time. Oh, excuse me. Sure. Hello? Hello? Special Agent Taylor there, please. Uh, just a minute. It's for you, Jim. Hmm? Oh, thanks. Taylor speaking. Kellogg, Los Angeles office. Taylor. Yeah. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. No, what's that? That package of roller skates was picked up last night. Yeah, yeah, that is bad news, Kellogg. We sent out an alarm and we got the word. Well, thanks. I'll see you in L.A. as soon as I can get there. <laughs> Wonderful news for you. Yeah, what? Well, I was just in powder in my nose, and a girl came and started putting something on that bulletin board. You know, right by where you come in, you know. Yeah? Yeah. Well, this thing she was putting up was a notice about a movie that's going to be made right here in this rink. No kidding? Yeah. And they're looking for people to be in the movie who are good skaters. Especially, they mentioned a man's part who was kind of like the leading man, and he has to skate and be good looking and stuff like that. Oh, did you read this notice? Yeah, sure. So then I talked to the girl, and she told me that I was the first one to see it on account of she was just putting it up. So this is your chance, Frankie, your big chance. Yeah. Well, where, where, where do you go? Who do you see? Well, the girl told me that there's a talent scout here right now. He, he's supposed to be someplace up in them boxes up there. Oh, did she tell you what he looked like? Yeah. She said he was a dark-haired guy wearing a blue suit and a gray hat. Hey, hey, look. Look, there's a fella just like that. You see him over there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be him, Frankie. He's the only one sitting in the watcher's seat. Yeah, you're right. Uh, What do you think I should do? Well, just skate over there. And talk to him? Give him a little exhibition first. 
Okay, I'll come along. You may need me for some double stuff. Come on, let's go. Yeah, okay. I'll be talking to you as we come up. Now, you make out like it's something funny, see? Then flash the smile at me. Let him see your teeth. Okay. Okay, Frankie, he's looking this way. Yeah. Uh, uh, what are you going to talk about? Well, uh, I'll count. Uh, two and two's four. Four and four's eight. Last. Laugh. Huh? Eight and eight, sixteen, sixteen and sixteen, thirty-two, thirty-two. Hey, Cutter, you can hear you. Okay. Do some twirls. Huh? Go on, go on. Yeah, twirls. Frankie, Frankie, he's calling you. Yeah. Come here, honey. Huh? Uh, me? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Come on, honey. Uh, is uh, this about that notice on the bulletin board? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you've been watching Frankie and think maybe he can do it, huh? Well, I haven't exactly been watching him. I've been looking for him. Yeah? Uh, what studio are you with? I'm not with any studio. Huh? I'm a special agent of the FBI. <laughs> Frank Phillips was tried and convicted for a violation of the interstate transportation of stolen motor vehicle statutes. He received a sentence of five years, and his wife, Pearl, was given a two-year term on the same charge. When Special Agent Taylor arrived in Los Angeles, he immediately made a tour of all skating rinks and posted cards on the bulletin boards of each, with results which you have just witnessed. And so, another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation was closed. But the arrest and conviction of these two people did not erase the pressing problem they personified. In every part of the nation, law enforcement officers are facing more and more young people who are committing increasingly serious crimes. In lonely prison cells in every state, you can find counterparts of this pair in tonight's case, some of whom are doomed to spend the greater part of their remaining years in a penal institution. The wreckage of their desolate lives is of interest and importance to every person in the nation. For there are those who believe that no country, however strong it may be, can long continue to waste so many young people so needlessly and fruitlessly. Democracy is a chain of fortunate circumstances, and these youthful wasted lives are our weakest link. The job of strengthening that link is in the hands of every parent in America. They must not fail. Let's quickly review the three freedoms you can assure for yourself with an equitable, independent 60s plan. First, freedom from money worries and job worries after your 60th birthday. Real financial independence. Second, freedom to live where you choose. Third, freedom to do the things you've always wanted to do. That's the good life you can look forward to with an independent 60s plan. Don't say you can't afford it until you've talked to your Equitable Society representative. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A file revealing the activities of a cold-blooded assassin. Its subject, manslaughter. Its title, the casual killer. The incident used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Bill Conrad, Paul Fries, Florence Hallop, Bill Hawes, Peggy Weber, and Roland Winter. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production.